Yes, this is the cliche title, Dark Souls Saved My Life, but maybe not in the way you think. Now, I've seen a few videos on this topic and I wanted to make my own because I think my story is a bit different. But watching those videos was the first time I felt like someone truly understood me and how the Souls experience impacted me. I couldn't really get any of my friends to play it, so no one really understood except my best friend who introduced me to the game. He was the only one that really appreciated the series like I did, and he's the reason I even started this channel. Shout out to you, Nate. Clearly, this isn't going to be my typical scripted, high edited video, but I hope you like it either way and can relate to it in some way, shape, or form. Let me start by telling you how I got into the series in the first place. I was sitting in my apartment with one of my friends and we were scrolling the Xbox store trying to find a new game to play. I remember my life wasn't in the best place at the time, my grades had been slipping, I had stopped working out, I was drinking a lot and eating a ton of crap I shouldn't have been eating. I was even being lazy at my job. Normally I'm a pretty driven person, but this was a low point for me. I was even slacking with my passions, the things I was working on on the side. But after scrolling a while with my my roommate, we eventually stumbled across Dark Souls 3 on sale for only $13. I had heard of the game and I actually thought I had remembered playing it at Nate's house before. All I remembered about it is that it was hard. So we hopped into a party with Nate and asked him if it was any good. He told us it was one of his favorite games, but co-op was kind of difficult. So we decided to give it a try. I died over and over to Udex Gundir and the only thing that kept me going was knowing I could play with my friends once I beat him. After about 30 tries, I finally managed to take him down and I got the first rush of beating a tough boss in Dark Souls. Well, it wasn't a tough boss, it was Gundir, but you know what I mean. After that, we spent hours farming for embers and trying to summon each other, but it never worked. I guess we lived too far away or something. And honestly, I think this is the best thing that could have happened to me. It forced me to get good, which is why this channel is named Ember. I played the game for a while and actually got really into it, but at a certain point around Irithyll, it started getting hard and I think I just put it down to play some other games and forgot about it. Fast forward to the summer, Nate comes to visit and says he could help me with Dark Souls 3. We had a ton of fun trading off lives on Pontiff and eventually he beat him. I was genuinely convinced I couldn't do it myself. Once he got back home, we got the summoning working and he helped me with the rest of the bosses. I beat the game and loved the experience, but I still wasn't quite hooked. Sure, it was a great time, but I didn't have that instant addiction everyone else seemed to get. After a few weeks, I kept thinking about that game. I wondered if I could go back and beat all those bosses myself. Uh, probably not. It's just too hard for me. But then I saw something else on sale. Dark Souls Remastered. I didn't know much about Dark Souls 1 or 2. I'd only heard that people didn't really like the second one. But I bought them both out of curiosity, and this is where things changed. I beat Dark Souls Remastered in 9 days. Never in my life had I felt such emotions from a game, a sense of wonder and dread, a sense of accomplishment. The exploration and connections this game created within the world was absolutely mind-blowing. I'll never forget some of those moments. And that was when it all clicked. The difficulty is what makes the progression so rewarding. It probably seems obvious to us all now, but it wasn't at the time. It's only easy to see once you felt it for yourself, but I loved it. But this is only scratching the surface of how Dark Souls really changed my life. And speaking of my life, it was still not in the best place. It was almost summer vacation, and at this point, all I wanted to do was play Dark Souls. So during finals week of my sophomore year of college, I decided to try Dark Souls 2. Holy sh talk about instant addiction. I've never been so obsessed with a video game off the bat like I was with Dark Souls 2. Nate even started this one with me, but I was so addicted I ended up breezing past him and getting way more ahead. In three days, I had 24 hours played during finals week. Turns out if Johnny Sins isn't your teacher, no amount of extra credit turns an F into an A in three days. Anyway, a few days later, I beat Dark Souls 2 in the horrendous frigid outskirts, and I loved every second of it. Well, not the frigid outskirts, f that place. But anyway, this started something completely new in my life. A new way of carrying myself and viewing obstacles. I could quit because it's too hard, or I could push through it and get that reward of doing something difficult. I noticed myself eating better, working out more, drinking less, being more willing to take on challenges at my job, everything Dark Souls taught me without realizing. But it really goes a lot further than this. After I played the first three Dark Souls games, I went on to play Bloodborne and Sekiro, but I had the same problem when I got to Sekiro. It's too hard, it's just too hard. But then I realized all the other Dark Souls games had DLCs too, so I went back and played all those, and I managed to beat everything besides Medea. He's impossible, I can't beat this guy, look at his health! I probably tried him three times before I gave up. I still didn't get it. Fast forward a year or two, I decided to give Sekiro 
Sekiro another try. This time I did my research to see what I was doing wrong the first time and finally the combat clicked. Sekiro instantly became my favorite FromSoft game and I raved it to all my friends non-stop for the weeks following. Then the PS5 comes out. I finally get to play Demon's Souls. This was during the finals week of my junior year, but this time I kind of had my shit together and managed to get some decent grades while still playing an absurd amount. And I loved every second of it. Then all I had to do was wait for Elden Ring, the perfect game. But I realized one thing, my job wasn't done. I still hadn't beat Madeir and I was terrified to. I was convinced he was impossible, even though at this point I had tackled all the hardest bosses in the series. Ishin, Orphan of Cause, Fume Knight, but for some reason, Madeir still fell out of reach. But I knew I had to beat him to finish everything. I work up the courage to boot the game up and what do you know, I beat him in two tries two tries. I'd given up before I even tried. I built up this narrative in my head that I couldn't do it just because I tried it once and couldn't beat it. And that applied to my life perfectly. My whole life I've tried to pursue things of high interest like script writing or YouTube and people always told me it wasn't possible or they tried it and it doesn't work. Don't waste your time. But I'd always continue anyway and I'd always find some degree of success because I stayed consistent. And I stayed consistent because I enjoyed it. And through that I learned that consistency was the key to success in anything. Practice makes perfect and it made it much easier to try new things knowing I'm guaranteed to succeed eventually if I just put in the effort. Now I actually enjoy sucking at things because the initial learning curve is so steep that it's satisfying being able to get good at something very quickly in the beginning. And it wasn't until I started this YouTube channel that I realized everyone says these things because they think they tried but they didn't. So many people make a YouTube channel, post one video and get mad when they don't go viral. They blame it on the algorithm and tell everyone else that it doesn't work. You can't be a YouTuber. And I believe them, even after succeeding doing all these other things on my own terms, I still thought being a YouTuber was just too difficult. I was too late, I missed my chance, it was too hard now. But I tried anyway. I saw that shorts were becoming a thing earlier this year, and after seeing what happened on TikTok, I knew this was an opportunity. It was possible. So I posted five shorts a day for three months straight. That ended up getting me about 2,000 subscribers, which was crazy for me. I had no idea that many could come that quickly. And I realized the people that told me I couldn't be a YouTuber are the people that gave it a half-assed try and got mad when it didn't immediately work out, which is exactly what I did with Madeir. Realizing that trying things over and over is how you succeed and not trying multiple things once was a big lesson the Soul Series taught me. I mean, if you fought Madeir 20 times a day for 6 months, don't you think you would be able to beat him by then? Not only would you beat him, you would demolish him. You would master all of his moves and beat him without even thinking about it. So why don't those same rules apply to life? they do. After posting so many shorts every day, I started learning exactly what would work, how I could provide entertainment and get people to watch while still making the kinds of videos I want to make. When Elden Ring came out, it took me about a week to decide I wanted to start making videos about it. I had a brand new channel and I felt so behind like everyone else had covered it already. I had just moved to LA and was barely paying my rent. I had heard that YouTube could take years to start paying out, but I was prepared for that challenge. I knew all the hard work would pay off, just like a Souls boss. And because of that, I was able to start paying my bills and be much more comfortable financially within just four months of starting YouTube. Because I knew if I had a video go viral, that didn't mean I made it. It was just the first boss. I had to do it again and again and again with new challenges like upping the production quality of the videos, creating my own shirts, working with brands for sponsored videos. All these things were just new bosses that I had to overcome. And along my journey of playing all the Souls games for the first time, I started to notice something even more special about the Souls series, the community, which is another reason I made this channel. Back in my my Dark Souls 3 days, I didn't even notice most of the summons were actually real people just willing to help me with a boss. That concept was unheard of for me. I had never encountered a community online that was actually willing to help each other, much less in gaming. One experience in particular stood out to me throughout my journey. I had just discovered the secret Belfry Gargoyles boss in Dark Souls 2 and was having a lot of trouble getting past them. I was summoning Nate over and over and we just couldn't do it. Until I accidentally summoned another player on my fifth attempt who messaged me asking if it was my first time playing Dark Souls 2. I said yes, and he said he'd be down to help us out while he was waiting for his friend to get on. This was such a crazy concept to me. This guy is just willing to help us beat a boss for nothing in return. Like, sure, you get your in-game rewards, but nothing you can't just get by playing normally. We smashed the gargoyles on our first try with the help of this young king. Well, uh, I don't actually know if he was young, but I pictured him, like, 
in his 20s. He messaged me saying, GG, let me know if you need help with any of the other areas. I was astonished at how kind someone in a game so punishing could be and realized this is another crucial component to this series, the community. Everyone knows the harsh reality of the game and how difficult it is your first time through, and since most people got help in the beginning, they try to pay it forward to others. This reminds me of the end of Nier Automata, or Automata. I won't spoil it for you if you haven't played, but let's just say the end of that game changed my life. And I realized this is just like life. Think about how many people are willing to meet for coffee and offer career or love advice to a younger person just because someone did the same for them. The entire entertainment industry, most industries really, are built around connections and the reason they help you is because someone once helped them. And in turn, you help someone else when your time comes. The idea of paying it forward and allowing the cycle to continue is so beautiful because you don't have to do it but you want to since someone else did it for you. No one's gonna scoff at you or punish you for saying no to a coffee meeting, but you know in your gut that it's the right thing to do. Someone helped you, so now you wanna pay that forward. It's seemingly insignificant things like this that made this series so impactful for me. Elden Ring was such a blast for me because I knew no matter how hard a boss was, I would get them eventually. I just had to keep trying. And honestly, sometimes that hindered me because I'd be super under-leveled fighting a boss, but I didn't care. The harder the journey, the sweeter the reward. And I can genuinely say that the soul Soul series not only changed my life for the better, it saved my life. It saved me from going in a bad direction. It helped my depression. People can tell you what the right things are to do all day long, but the Souls games are the only thing that made me truly realize I can do anything. And I have the power to take my life wherever I want, because it made me conquer all these hurdles without even realizing I was doing it. It's only after that you realize what you accomplished. And if this didn't hit you directly while playing the games, hopefully my story helps. If you put enough time and effort into something, you will get good. It's unreasonable to think otherwise. Just like we all did with the Nameless King or Artorius or Millennia. Nate still hasn't beat Millennia either, by the way. Just get good, kid. And if you think just because this is a more chill video, I'm gonna do an outro 